Its regime is brutal and designed with one simple aim in mind. Punishment. It's designed to be so bad that no one will ever dream of re-offending. I control when they eat, when they sleep, when they shit. The guards here are tough and the inmates are even tougher. You do not want to come here. We can be very dangerous, dangerous people. Now, in a unique experiment, 10 British men have been chosen to become inmates in a real American prison. They have no clue as to what they're getting themselves into. After years of drug taking, alcohol abuse and petty crime, these men are in danger of really going off the rails. For some, one more crime could land them in jail, for real. Can this short, sharp shock help them before it's too late? It will be the hardest thing they've ever done. Not all of them will last. I don't feel safe. But can a stretch inside be the shock they need to put them on the straight and narrow? Will America's toughest prison scare them straight? Previously, the Brits were shown no mercy as they became the sheriff's inmates. They joined the chain gang and discovered why Tent City is America's most brutal prison regime. Of course we can't fucking match. Have we ever marched like that before? Petty criminal Nathan was punished for refusing his haircut and the lads were divided. Man, they're so feeble, so weak. But it was all too much for Alistair, who didn't even make it through the day. You came over here, quit. Today, the remaining lads must stick together when the going really gets tough. They'll be taken into a maximum security jail and come face to face with a killer. At 28 years old, I'm, I'm looking at losing my life. The system wants to kill me. It's 5 a.m. in the heart of Tent City, where the British inmates have been locked up for the past 48 hours. They're fast asleep, but not for much longer. <laughs> The men have never been inside before and are finding it difficult to adjust to jail life. And shower. And shower, your new clothes are right here. Everything they do is controlled by strict Go officers. Jail, if they step out of Six line, minutes. they'll be punished. Life in here sucks, really sucks a lot. You gotta smell everybody else's farts and all that. It, it really, it's really horrible. It stinks. You gotta use the same urinal with the, another person, take a shower with another man. It's, 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 it's harsh for to see another man naked. Time, girls, go, go. Grab your stuff and change in the bathroom. Out of all the lads, 23-year-old Nathan is struggling the most to cope with the harshness of prison life. I've avoided going to the toilet because um, there's pee all over the seats, the floor, and you can't see anything. But the toilet is the least of Nathan's problems. He has refused to shave his head like the other lads and today he will be sent packing if he doesn't comply with prison rules. It's not something I want, but I feel like I'm forced into that decision with the whole hair issue. To make matters worse for everyone, Nathan's actions haven't gone unnoticed on the yard. You know what people would be calling you if you quit? A punk bitch. That's not nice, that's fighting words in here. Get one of these, baby, become mini me. You got mad because I was calling him a faggot. Uh, Prince, uh, the one with the hair, they cut his hair. Nathan, he looked like a little girl. What is that? Dude, Nathan. Yeah, Prince. The constant abuse from the other side of the fence is the final straw for the rest of the lads. This lot are ripping into you big time outside, are you? Look at that fairy and all that, why are you getting his hair cut and all that, do you know what I mean? You're a laughing stock at the moment, mate, and you, you've got to think of that. I want to stay. Yeah. If anything, I want to push it out. I don't want to prove to everyone like that I can do this. It's just I have issues where it comes yeah, you ain't got to, to prove to us. Prove, prove it to yourself. Is that what you're still saying that you're not going to do your hair? No. No one gives a shit. It's just as a team, we just want to do it together and want to go in the same numbers. The hair's got to go, or you've got to go yourself, man. I think it's the end of the road, really. He's not willing to comply with the orders that are set forth by the sheriff's office or the chain gang. There's no way back for Nathan. He's come 6,000 miles to change his life, 
but isn't prepared to change his hairstyle. Sergeant Irby escorts him to be processed out of jail. Nathan's being kicked off the programme before he's had a chance to achieve anything. Put sign right here. It's the end of the road. Sergeant Irby and Sergeant Corpus have had enough of his excuses. Of all the ones that came, he needed it more than any other. I regret letting people down a lot. Um, it's it's going to play on my head for a long time. With Nathan's departure, the lads are another man down. And the day hasn't even begun. Today is the first time the British inmates will be doing hard labour on the chain gang, alongside real American convicts. They are secured together by the ankle with heavy chains. With four people on the chain, everyone must march in sync or their ankles will be severely bruised. With two lads dropping out already, the Brits have lost face on the yard and must put in a back-breaking day's work if they're ever going to regain some respect. <laughs> the lads are on the way to the desert to spend the day working in the blistering heat. With temperatures over 100 degrees, it's going to be an exhausting day in hostile surroundings. You guys need to watch out for scorpions here. We know what a scorpion is. You guys find syringes, needle. Put your hand up, do not pick it up. This is the first time the Brits are working alongside the American inmates, who so far have made them feel less than welcome. But whatever their differences, today they must all suffer a very public and humiliating punishment in the full glare of passing motorists. It's demoralizing. Like, you see the people go by with their cell phones and take pictures and laugh and honk their horns and things. With three feet of heavy steel chains separating them, it's difficult for the lads to coordinate walking together. I just couldn't get the fucking hang of it. I, I, I've got two left feet, and both of them worked the wrong way. The one person not chained up is 27-year-old James Daly who has been selected as the trustee to run errands for the chain gang. Anybody needs water in the first group or in the second group, grab their canteens, come back, give them some water, take it back to them. Anybody runs out of water, that's your job. All they're going to holler is trustee. You need to listen up. Trustee's your name today. Trustee! The fuck? You ain't on no chain. We're out here in the middle of the desert, man. Come on. Shit, we thirsty, man. Come on. This is a big test for James, who's not used to being ordered around by anyone. I've got a lot of fear on the pan, the way coke happy. So I'm not over 20 grams worth of debt. <laughs> I'm gonna get arrested and get in prison. That's why I wanna go over there, basically, to kill my habit. I just don't want to do it. I want to come back as a fresh person. Don't want to do coke. Off the rails, James needs to grow up and face his responsibilities if he wants to avoid the nick. With the women and the coke and the, and the debts and the, do you know what I mean? It's just all building up on me, you know? I don't like Americans, really, so I tell them to suck my cock. <laughs> hey, Trump! Hey, 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 thirsty hey, shit! Hey, Where the hell? Wisely for James, he's keeping his views on Americans to himself. His day is already proving hard enough. The weather is really, really taking its toll because I'm getting migraine and that from real hot weather. And obviously I'm fair skinned, so I have to be careful of that. Don't pick up any sharp objects. The temperature has now reached 120 degrees. But there's no let up from Officer Salaji, who's been on their case since day one. I want to see all of you working. Yeah, Officer Largy, even the big, hardcore officer, obviously he's going to try it. You're going to get someone who's going to be the big I am. Told you guys not to examine stuff, just trash, pick it up, throw it away. Here, grab a bag. The people that work here, they don't know what crime you've done. So the minute you put on this, these stripes, all of a sudden you're now a liar, you're now a thief, you, you now your word means nothing. It's almost like you're part of some huge conspiracy or brotherhood of scumbags. 
the British lads have been doing hard labour for four hours in the scorching Arizona desert when Tom finds a tin on the roadside and hands it to the inmates. Nice. Some tea. Actually tea. Whoa! Mark, come and see this. What is this? What's, oh, what's in there? Nice. It's a bag of marijuana, complete with hash pipe. Let me see. Let me see. Somebody yeah. got pulled oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, right there. Man. You guys are sick, man. You give that to the cops. Huh. Come you, on. <laughs> in America, you don't do that. In America, you smoke it. I was just shocked at picking it up. I didn't honestly think I'd be able to find anything like that on the side of the street. That obvious as well. No, there's a little marijuana pipe and a lighter. I mean, what are the odds of finding that? Keep that shit to yourself, Sean. Like, uh, Hey, hey, how much would that have been worth on the yard? At least 300. I suppose in the long run it was the best thing to do, but things did go through my mind. 350 bucks, I couldn't pay for that. It's one thing finding contraband, but another thing smuggling it back into jail. Trying to get it back in there. That's why we got you. You would have had to keister it. Keister, that means you put it between your butt cracks. Put it up, put it in your butt. For the British inmates who are trying to be clean and sober for the first time, Finding the drugs is a reminder of how easy it is to be tempted back into old habits. Marijuana, ecstasy, heroin, crack, pills, I mean, trips. So you do it all? crack? Used to, yeah. Yo, I'm an alky, and he's a druggie. You mix the two up, you know it's motherfucking funky. I don't like being sober. That's my problem. All started from when I was young, getting in trouble by the police, more like drinking. Took my dad's car once, got caught with that, doing drugs. Get caught with that. I ain't got a clue what I do. I wake up in a police house, I think, what the hell? Thinking I'm in my bedroom. You wrap it off the decade, no question it's all over. High on my supply, because I'm never ever sober. That's just, I just want to sort my life out, basically. I don't need, otherwise I'm just going to be a bum all my life. I don't want to be like that anymore. Going to the USA, I'm going to show you how to play. In close proximity to the Mexican border, Arizona is a primary route for the distribution and manufacture of narcotics. In Tent City, 60% of inmates are convicted of drugs-related crime. The drug of choice here is crystal meth. This man-made chemical is highly addictive and the side effects are horrific. You know, you do a little meth, you stay up for days, you know. Weekend balls. Your mind is gone. You see things, your sex drive is up, you want to screw every damn thing you see, doesn't care if she's fat, ugly, whatever. You steal everything, you don't care. In a short space of time, meth addicts stop eating, their gums rot away, and their body deteriorates. Mentally, it fucks you up. You don't really realize it, but um, it really does a number on you. Still to come, a tough day gets even tougher. The Brits are taken to the maximum security jail and come face to face with a killer. In a unique experiment, a group of British men have become inmates in America's most brutal jail. After hours of hard labor on the chain gang, the Brits arrived back in Tent City. It's been tougher than they ever imagined. Yeah. Mate, it's well swollen. The boots are too big, they only got size seven. Just a bit swollen. It's been a hard slog, but for four of the lads, the day is not over yet. Mr. Dale, I need to see you. I need you to include yourself and three other inmates are gonna go someplace else. The rest of them are gonna stay here. The British inmates are cuffed up and transported away, with no clue where they're going and no idea what's about to happen. They are taken downtown to Fourth Avenue, the highest security jail in Phoenix. Can you watch these four inmates? It houses some of the most dangerous remand prisoners. What the lads don't know yet is that they are about to come face to face with two of the most notorious men in Arizona. We brought you here to meet real inmates, okay? These inmates are hardcore, have done it all. They've killed people, okay? They will be shackled and they'll be leg ironed, all right? 
If you feel unsafe, call me and I'll walk right over to you and get you out of the way. All right, let's go. The Brits are taken into the closed custody pod, the highest category secure unit. I want the four of you to come right in here and have a seat at that table right there facing the table. Put your legs up to the table and sit down facing the table. Inmates here are extremely dangerous and kept in solitary confinement at all times. The man they're about to meet is Christopher Whitley, a member of Unit 88 Skins, a neo-Nazi gang. He is accused of first-degree murder. This is the first physical contact I've had with anybody like this in about two years. You know, I'm no physical contact with anybody. I went nine months without leaving my cell. You know, the system has no mercy on me because I've been through it all my life. I'm asking why you're here for. I'm fighting a first-degree murder case, which, if found guilty, I could get the death penalty. Really? Lethal injection. It was an accident. And, you know, in America, they think eye for an eye. You know, you kill somebody, you deserve to be killed yourself. You know, in, in my situation, they try to say, well, we don't give a fuck if it was an accident. We're going to charge you with first-degree murder and see if we can't kill you. Yeah, so it's, it's tough, man. Since I was about nine years old, I've been in and out of institutions. I wasn't necessarily a criminal. I was just a kid, and I wanted to... Christ. Yeah, my best friend taught me how to steal cars and yeah. stuff. That's, and it wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to be like an outlaw or nothing. I just wanted a car so I could drive around. Driving. Yeah, that's <laughs> but those few nights of fun could cost you the rest of your life, you know? And it's not necessarily worth it. My, my problem is I just want to do what I want to do, and I don't want anybody to tell me I can't do it. See, a lot of, a lot of the reason why I, I got involved in the system as a kid was because I was a kid and I, had, and I didn't want to listen to people. Now, now I have to listen to these guys, you know? I can't necessarily sit here and say, well, this is what you should do, because I didn't do it. But honestly, like, I mean, I'd listen more to you because you've, you've done it and you're like, fuck, why'd I do this, do you know what I mean? <laughs> the bottom line is, at 28 years old, I'm, I'm looking at losing my life. They want to kill me. The system wants to put me down. And when I sit back and I think about that, I look at it like, what the fuck was I thinking, man? You know? You guys, you do all right, man. Just make the right changes. Whitley has had a profound effect on the Brits. That is not, this is not for me, right? It does give you a real bloody eye open, man. What it's like, that's real powerful. I mean, best advice you can get is from someone like that. But worse is still to come. Sergeant Irby wants them to meet Robert Harville, accused of being a godfather in the Mexican Mafia. It controls narcotics and contract killings across the west coast of America. You guys all look pretty young. How old are you, man? I'm uh, 38. I spent about the last uh, 21 in prison already. 21 years. How long you got to do, Lord? How long? Um, well, it all depends on the outcome on this. This is fighting death penalty cases right now. So. Do you want me asking why you're facing the death penalty? Uh, oh, murders, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what kind of charges you, you, you fellas been getting caught up in? Well, you don't mind me asking? Nah, mine's, mine's drugs, bro. Drug. Yeah, well, yeah. Drug related, so. That's what started it, pretty much. Yeah. I was a teenager. Yeah, yeah. Drugs, you know. Just this is where I'm ending up, you know. You know, there's a possibility I could end up on death row. You know what I mean? And uh, 
it all started, man. I, you know, I look in all your faces and, you know, I see myself years and years ago. If I had a chance to do it all over again, uh, believe me, I, I would have changed everything, you know. This ain't no life for anyone. It's a dead-end street. Tom? All right, Thank you very much. Don't upset. I don't even kind of even imagine half the shit they're going through. That could just be me. That could be like, do you know what I mean? That could be Matt. That could be any of us. And I just think, fuck, man. And you know the bad thing about life like that is, is that it only takes a moment, and you're done. And you're done. It's easy to get in trouble. So hard staying straight. All right. I need you to get on your feet. Go right out there to that door and put your backs on the wall. The lads are shaken up by this experience. It has been a shock to see where their lives could end up if they choose to follow the wrong path. I've never done anything like that, man. That's fucking scary shit. They told us who they were once we'd come out, which was probably a good thing. Because I think, I think we would have shit our pants a lot more. I probably wouldn't have actually gone into that room if I had known who they were beforehand. First guy with the tattoos. He looked quite remorseful. It hit through to us, really. It really did hit through. Somebody said that Mexican Mafia, man. He's nearly, I don't know how many people he's killed. He can still get people killed from, from inside. Yeah, he just has to send the word out. At least they're getting what they deserve here. No. Oh. It's just the way he talks about his old life makes you feel from no, no. Murders. What time for him? No. I'll be honest, I don't think I'll ever forget it. It's something life changing. It's been an exhausting day for the British inmates. Will the eight lads that remain be strong enough to cope with the tough regime still to come? Will jail shock them into going straight or scare them into going home? Next time, the lads get into serious trouble. I take you one place and you do something stupid like this. And Sergeant Irby has a shot for them. Tomorrow morning, we are going to bury the dead. And you need to know that one of them is a baby girl.